Thanks for checking out this unboxing video. What do I like Japanese snacks? And when do I like them? Basically whenever I can get them. And usually when I can get them is when I get my snacku box. And this is the unboxing for my March snacku box. They always look the same. Do I need to show them to you anymore like that? Because they always look the same. But what doesn't look the same are these little teaser cards that tell you what's in there. That's pretty. It looks a little Eiffel Towery when you just take a quick look at it. So I'll show you this up front if you want to pause on it and see ahead of time, ahead of me tasting what's going to be in there. Sorry, I have a ring light above this, so I have to kind of maneuver around it. But this is focused on Tokyo and exploring Tokyo. So we'll talk about the Tokyo-related snacks as we get to them. Um, yeah. Get that stuff out of here. This is what it's looking like in there. It looks like some goodies. I did look ahead at what the uh, little spoiler thing had on there. And um, got to be honest, this looks like it could be one of the best that we've ever had if it goes the way I think it could. So let's, fingers crossed on that one. Not like I've, you know, had any bad ones ever. Oh my gosh. That... Oh man, I only have one of these. It looks like there might be a good amount of Senbai. So I'm going to start with it. This giant Senbai that looks like a cookie, basically. This is from the popular snacks portion. It is a slow-baked rice cracker with black sesame seeds. They're just calling it a sesame Senbai. That's gigantic. Um, and for that reason, there's only one of them in the box. Usually you get like two of everything with this larger box because there is the tasting size box. But um, yeah, this makes me sad knowing there's only one of these because... A, I love Senbai, and B, I love sesame, so, oh my gosh. Oh, just smells like soy sauce and sesame. Yeah, it smells very good. Look at how, like, crispy that looks. Mmm. It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be to bite through. It's very crunchy, as you can hear, I'm sure. Mm, okay. You get that nice kind of sweet kind of umami taste from the outside that has the um, the soy sauce to it. Um, yeah, it's good. And then once you get inside, you get that typical Senbai rice cracker flavor. And then the um, black sesame seeds are coming through in the flavor. But the black sesame seeds, I'm not tasting them as much as I would assume I would. It's interesting. I'm not the most like graceful eater so I apologize I like to just jump in pretty much although I will say it's weird um doing this like watching myself eat basically on the camera there are probably a lot of people would hate that I don't like it but I get through it you know Okay, so that's a good way to start. That's good. I love Senbai. I haven't met that many Senbais I don't like, so awesome. What is this? Oh, I don't know about these, though. We'll see. This is also from the popular snack side. This is a Yaki Tomon... to... Tomonakashi. Yaki Tomonakashi. That's what I'm going to say. Baked mini rice puffs topped with buttered corn flavor. You know, I'm not the biggest corn fan so like having a buttered corn thing this could go wrong for me we'll see oh my god yeah it smells like like as soon as i got that open it's just just immediate puff of like corn smell which isn't very appetizing for me because it's like a smell like canned corn you know where it's a little sickly sweet oh god that's exactly what it smells like but these things look nicely browned and a little puffy Do you like canned corn? Because if you do, that's what this tastes like. Also, puffed rice. Okay. It it ends up having a little bit of a flavor that's kind of sweet. It's almost a little cookie-like in the way it tastes because it's, it's a little sweet. It's not very... Like, it has a consistency of cracker and it has a little bit of that flavor initially. But then it's a little sweet, so it's almost lightly cookie-like, like a wafer. 
It's not bad. You just need the like canned corn as a flavor. I'm not huge on it, so yeah, you know. Okay, let's go for something better. What do we got here? This thing looks interesting. Ooh, oh, okay. I'm very interested in this one. This one looks crazy on here. It's a, a Tokyo Tamago. For over 15 years, Ginza Tam Tamaya has been making traditional Japanese snacks with a modern twist. This cute egg-shaped snack has four layers. The white chocolate outside covers the dual-layer sponge cake, which is then filled with mildly sweet black sesame paste. Ooh, nice. This is our most popular snack, which tr tends to sell out often. Quick, quick uh, bleh, luckily, we were able to get our hands on some to bring to you. Awesome. See, and that's the thing I love about Snacky. Like, they try hard to get things that are kind of exclusive-ish. Like, I remember last year when they did their uh, February one, and they were able to get really typically hard to get uh, this one hard to get snack that sells out super fast, but they worked specifically with uh, the people who make it to secure enough for them. And it was like a brownie made with um, actual, like, strawberries. And it was amazing. Okay, so this thing looks nutty. <laughs> this thing looks crazy. I don't know how this is going to be. Like, literally, it looks like this, like, white chocolate egg. Try and get the glare off of it. Yeah. It's, I mean, wait a minute. This is weird because it smells a bit like white chocolate, but then it also smells slightly peanut buttery, which is weird. I don't know if that's the sesame doing something. Like the, the mix of the cake and the sesame. I don't know. Here we go. Oh, okay. So on here, the paste in the middle looks more of like a jelly. That's not the way it is. It is more of like a dried paste in actuality. It's a little bit spongy. So you see you have the white chocolate on the outside, then you have the cake, then you have that black sesame paste. Which, the pla black sesame paste is actually a little bit mild, so you get the flavor of, like, the sweet white chocolate on the outside. You get a little bit of the cake that's giving it a slight vanilla. And then you have that nice black bean paste that's not overstated, and that's one of the great things. Like, think about, like, really roasted dark black uh, sesame. That's kind of what it tastes like, but lightly flavored. And then it gives it a slight earthiness. It's good. I, I dig that. It's kind of a weird item. It looks weird when you describe it. It sounds weird, but it tastes pretty good. I dig it. So that was our first featured snack that I enjoyed. Okay, next. This is from the popular snacks portion. Yaki Okoge Shoyu. Traditional baked rice senbai topped with aged soy sauce made by the famous Komeno... Komeno Sato store in rural Tochigi. I mean, it's Senbai. Most likely, I'm going to enjoy it. Because <laughs> I haven't met that much Senbai I dislike, as I said before. Um, yeah, looks like Senbai. Hmm. It almost looks like, if you see it from far enough away, it almost looks like katsu. You know, like that fried, like panko fried meat. Yeah, I mean, it smells like soy sauce. So it's like, <coughs> excuse me. Ooh, that last sniff was really deep. Um, yeah, it smells like senbai. Mm. Real nice, tangy soy sauce flavor on the outside. Super, super crunchy on the inside because it's kind of thin. And the puff rice flavor, it's very typical. It doesn't taste like, you know, it's kind of like a no-frills senbai taste-wise, but it's good. I like a no-frills senbai, so there's no problem with that for me. All right. Woo. Moving on. Yeah, let's go. I don't know what this is. Are there numerous ones of these? Okay, I'm going to go with this one because I saw it and grabbed it. This is, okay, this is from the featured snacks as well. Well, that, that last one was popular. This is featured. Sugar Butter Sandwich. A, a hit snack in Tokyo. Crispy barley wheat puff cookies filled with a mildly sweet milky white chocolate cream. 
they do a lot of milk chocolate in Japan, or at least in the in in this box. Um, like I said, I'm not huge on white chocolate, but you know, the way they do it's not that bad. Oh, it popped open. Well, there you see it. <laughs> they like these these. They almost look like triscuits on the outside. Oh. I smell the white chocolate, but yeah, it does smell very milky, like it said in the description. It's a very dairy-type smell. It smells good. It's very buttery, too. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. It's got, like, some granulated sugar on the top, too. So, it's sweet, but it's not crazy sweet. Definitely tastes buttery. Definitely tastes that white chocolate. Yeah. It's nice, it's rich, it's flavorful. Low vanilla hint in there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I like it. That one's tasty. Um That's my favorite thing thus far in the box. That's good. Mm. And for people who haven't watched a lot of these that I do, the snack unboxings, it bears reiterating. Sweet things in Japan are not nearly as sweet as the same sweet things in the United States. United States goes crazy with putting sugar in. Japan, they're very reserved with their sugar portioning. So you can have a snack that is sweet, but it's not sickly sweet. And I feel like in the United States, it's just like more sugar, more sugar, more sugar. So I love the sweet snacks from Japan because it's where I want sweet snacks to be. So, all right. There's something... There's something in particular in here that I want to save to the end. Well, other than... Okay. There's something I want to save to the end because it, it seems um, interesting. Could be not good. I don't know. So this must be the... What is this one? I'm going to have to open it first, I think. I think it's the Northern Egg Sable. Yes, it is. This is. Actually, I'm going to try and get the one that's least broken. That's not happening. They're both really broken. <laughs> this is the Northern Egg Sable. Uh, this is from the Popular Snacks. Slightly sweetened butter cookie made with organic eggs and fresh churned butter from Northern Hokkaido. It says to open it here, but... Oh, my God. It's going to be a problem. Oh, yeah. I'm probably just going to have to grab a piece of it because it's... So here's a piece of it, so you can just kind of see what it looks I mean, it just looks like a butter cookie. Like, it's a very nondescript, like, butter cookie. It smells really toasty, to be honest. Mm. Sugary, toasty, definitely buttery, slight vanilla. It's light. It's really light, and it, but it's buttery and flavorful. Got a nice crunch to it at the same time. It does you do taste that kind of toasted because it's pretty brown, which I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like a very light, slightly sweet, buttery cookie. That's really nice. That's one that you would think, oh, people who do like tea and biscuits, that'd be a perfect one to go with tea. Perfect because it's kind of mild on the flavor and it wouldn't actually overpower the tea you were having. That's good. I dig it, man. I dig it. What is this? What is it? Oh, I know what this is. So this is from the featured snacks. This is an Odaiba ring. This one looks weird. Slash interesting. And look at how this is like an amazing gold packaging. Sold only in Odaiba in Tokyo, this snack is made from light banana flavored chocolate crunch and topped with a white chocolate frosting. Once again, with the freaking white chocolate, man. And uh, I'm going to give a disclaimer. I don't like banana-flavored stuff, typically, so I might dislike that just, this bec just because of that. It looks weird. Like, look at that. Okay, I slightly smell the banana. It doesn't smell super strong, so if that's the way it is on the flavor, I could be okay. I do smell the white chocolate and the regular chocolate, too. The milk chocolate in there. It smells good. It smells kind of sweet. Chocolatey. It 
Okay. So, how sensitive are you to banana flavor is the question. I'm relatively sensitive to it, but it is very light in this. So there are moments where I'm chewing that piece where I'm like, oh, I taste a, I taste a banana and I don't like that. But then it, the chocolate takes over and I'm like, well, now I like it. So it kind of oscillates between I'm enjoying it and I'm not enjoying it. And with the left end flavor, there is a little bit of lingering banana, but it's actually kind of tasting a little bit like a chocolate covered actual banana. It's tasting less artificial than what you would assume. So that's actually not bad. For a banana flavored thing, I'm okay with that. It's not bad. Color me surprised. <laughs> or pretty surprised on that. Okay, next. We're getting low. We're almost done. So this must be almond cream sandwich. And I have two different ones. I have a soft raisin flavor and a yuzu and lemon. I don't want the raisin at the moment. I'll eat that later. I'm not... I'm not big on raisins, so that's the raisin one. I'm going to leave that to later. I'm going to do the yuzu and lemon especially because that's more of an interesting flavor profile in my opinion. So that would be more fun to do on, on the video. So Almond, established in 1946, is a small bake shop in the alleys of Roppongi, Tokyo. Uh, they are known for popularizing these baked cookie sandwich filled with either soft raisin cream or yuzu lemon cream. So we are going, as I said, the yuzu. One of the things I also really appreciate about these Japanese snacks, with the way they're packaged, a lot of the times they will have like a little notch in there where you can actually not struggle with opening them. They have a pretty easy access point. Oh, well, part of it came off. But it's kind of good because then you can see this is what it looks like, and then you can already see the cream in there. So, I mean, it just looks like some buttery cookies with some cream in there. Ooh, I smell the yuzu coming out. It's like this nice citrus along with the lemon. But then it's also mixing with like this nice dairy, buttery smell. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So it's very light. It, and like when you bite through this cookie, it almost like falls apart in your mouth, just kind of starts deconstructing and dissolving because it's very buttery. But that cream it gives it. A nice little citrusy zing between the lemon and the yuzu, and it's really flavorful and tasty. But it's also buttery and decadent, and it's nice. Mm -hmm. I think my wife will enjoy the other half of this. It's good. Okay, so now I'm gonna. Okay, I got two items left, and usually I keep the hard candy item to the end because I always have a hard candy item. But I'm gonna do that now, and then I'm gonna do the. Other thing last, because it's the weirdest and most risky. And you'll see what I mean. So, right now I'm going to do, from the popular snack side, Super Lemon. Can you handle the sourness? A super popular lemon candy, which packs a punch. I do like sour, too, so we will see. I guess I should put it the right way. There you go. You know, so I guess maybe this is supposed to be kind of like a, a warhead. Let me get that. All right. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, it looks like it's got, like, a sour powder on the outside. Let me shield it from the light a little bit so you can see. It's like a sour powder. Yeah, I mean, it smells like very, very tart lemon. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. After having a lot of sweet stuff, it makes the tart, like, the sourness way more sour. When it first hits your tongue. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. So, like I said, I like sour. So that, like, big hit of sour was actually really nice. It woke me up. Um, mm-hmm. And then it's sweet. It's like sweet lemon after that. And I like this. I look forward to eating more of these. That's good. That's one of the better hard candies they've had in here. The other one they've had in that I really like that's just is kind of weird are those milk candy ones that I've had like twice now because they almost taste a little caramelly, but they do taste like a nice creamy like milk. So now you might be wondering, what is this last item that Carlin made sure he left to the end because it's weird? Well, it is a little something called Kari Curry. 
Uh, Yoshimi is a popular Japanese curry restaurant in Japan. Their Tokyo store launched these bite-sized puffed mochi snacks topped with their secret curry spice blend. So literally, curry mochi puffs. First of all, I've never had mochi puffs. Second of all, I've never had puffs with curry. Third of all, I've never had mochi with curry. Woo, yeah, oh, it smells like curry. Oh, wow, it smells like curry. Yeah, buddy. Oh, that's a good smell, though. It's actually been a while since I've had Indian food. And curry, man, I do like a good curry. Look at that. So these little puffs, like, they don't have a uniform shape. They're just very weird looking. Yeah, it just smells like spices. Ooh. Oh. Oh, that's good. So it's not, like, super spicy curry. But it does build slightly. It's got a beautiful curry flavor to it. Beautiful. Um, if you like the underlying flavors of curry, but you just don't like the heat, there is a little bit of heat to it, but it's not crazy. And I say that being a person who has a hard time handling, you know, heat from food. Yeah, this is good. Now, I wouldn't really know it's mochi that's puffed. It just tastes like a puffed rice thing. What the focus is, is obviously the curry, the blend of curry spices, and that's good. That's a really nice snack. I like that a lot. This would actually go really well with, I, I know I say, like, this is a snack that goes well with beer. For this one specifically, this would go really well with, like, a nice crisp Pilsner, or if you're looking to downplay some of the spice character to it, a really nice IPA, because a lot of the lupulin from hops, and IPAs having a lot of hops, um, combats capsaicin. So, that's awesome. That's actually my favorite item in here because it was such a surprise flavor. And it's good. So, I really like that one. Also, that um, sugar butter sandwich was really awesome. Uh, all the Senbai because it's Senbai. Wasn't really big on that, like, uh, the corn one that they said tastes like canned corn. Just not my thing. But, um, yeah, good stuff. This is a good box. I never have bad boxes through Snacku. So, if you have interest in Snacku, let me know. I actually have like an affiliate coder link or something. Email me, brutalbattlepodcast at gmail.com. I could hook you up with that. It'll get you some money off and it'll help me out a little bit in getting points towards their stuff. But um, it's B R E W T A L and then battlepodcast at gmail.com. <coughs> Ooh, spice is building a little bit. It's not crazy though. Tasty. But anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. Put some comments down there. What are your thoughts on these snacks and how they looked? Could you handle that curry puffed mochi? I'd be interested to know. Uh, hit that subscribe if you like any videos I do. And give me a thumbs up if you want. Or if you're already subscribed, give me a thumbs up to let me know you're still watching. But thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.